<clears throat> talking about killing of innocents, I guess. Uh, so right now, the headlines all over the world uh, today, uh, as of an hour ago, the headlines all over the world are that Israel bombed a hospital in the Gaza Strip, uh, that over 500 people uh, are dead, uh, that uh, these uh, innocent, I don't know who knows, I don't know who was in the hospital, uh, but doctors, nurses, uh, uh, young people, children, uh, sick people, and so on. Uh, hospitals are supposed to be off, uh, uh, you know, not supposed to be bombed. Uh, it was bombed, and, and the world is flipping out. And, um, and, and, and generally, Israel is being condemned by everybody, even so title something like, Biden is still coming to Israel in spite of uh, this. Now, uh, there are riots now in, uh, in, in all over the Muslim world uh, condemning Israel. There are riots, uh, you know, there are demonstrations in Gaza. There's probably riots in the West Bank. Uh, it is, uh, it, you know, there is, uh, uh, there is a lot of upheaval. And again, this will just keep fueling everything. And the longer this is delayed... I've been saying this since this began. The longer it's delayed, the more difficult this will be in Israel. The more global, worldwide pressure there will be in Israel not to engage. Uh, the more they'll be encouraged to compromise. Uh, and, and we'll talk about Biden's visit in a minute. But, uh, but anyway, that is indeed happening. Now, there is also stories out there, um, uh, credible stories coming out right now saying, wait a minute. Uh, this hospital was not was not in an area it was hit that was hit was not an area the Israeli Air Force was active in. It was not an area that the Israeli Air Force was bombarding. Israel did not, as far as we can tell, um, purposefully target this hospital, and it doesn't look like it's an accident because they weren't targeting anything else. No, no, no. This is actually a Hamas rocket that um, malfunctioned and dropped onto the hospital and created an explosion that destroyed the building that killed however many people were killed. Um, so you got both sides, both stories on this. Uh, I'll say this. I, I don't know what happened. I don't think any of you know what happened. It could have been a, a stray Israeli missile. Maybe Israel targeted this, although it's very unlikely that they usually they let hospitals know and they evacuate the hospital before Israel blows it up, although they haven't blown up any hospitals this time. Why would they blow up a hospital full of people when they've asked other hospitals to evacuate? It just doesn't make any sense that Israel would target this. Um, and uh, it could be a stray missile uh, from Israel. It could be a Hamas rocket that misfired. We just don't know. And, and I think it's silly to take partisan sides here because it doesn't matter. The essential point here is that this is a war started, created by, initiated by, sponsored by Hamas. Everybody who dies in this war, everybody who dies in this war, innocent children, soldiers, uh, uh, everybody, the moral responsibility for their death is on Hamas. Whether Israel accidentally bombed this, purposefully bombed this, or whether Hamas accidentally bombed us. It doesn't matter. It's all on Hamas. Now, it's kind of interesting to know what actually happened, but we don't know. We don't know. What we do know is, uh, you know, the, the, the fact here, um, uh, the fact that Hamas has initiated this war, it's initiated this war over the last, uh, what is it, 18 years since it came to power, in, uh, in the Gaza Strip. It has been engaging in nothing but war for uh, almost 20 years. And every drop of blood, and this has to be said over and over and over again, and that is the ultimate response to any of this. It's not, well, we don't know. It, it, it could have been, uh, it could have been the, uh, it could have been uh, Hamas destroying this. The response needs to be, whoever did this, it's on them. Um, it's their mess. And Israel should feel free. It won't, and it won't do this. And, and this is why I don't believe Israel, uh, you know, uh, bombed them. But uh, Israel should feel free to bomb any target in the Gaza Strip that it deems necessary for its self-defense. This is why I'm, I'm skeptical about the hospital, although 
for all we know, there, there, was a, there is a, uh, a uh, Hamas uh, weapons depot underneath the building. For all we know, the Hamas headquarters is underneath the building. For all we know, the, the, the military leadership of Hamas was in one of, the, uh, one of the rooms in the hospital. And if any of those are true, then Israel is legitimate in, um, in, uh, in, in blowing it up. Anyway, so that's where we are. Uh, note that we are now, what, 10 days after the, the massacre, the, 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 just, the, the just horrific massacre of people uh, that Hamas committed, and Israel is not placed any boots on the ground, uh, that we do, Israel does not have any ground operations going on other than maybe special forces going on in Gaza. I told you that Bibi would hesitate. I told you Netanyahu is a wimp. I he has been for twenty you know for twenty years of his uh, premiership. Uh, there are many generals in Israel who are talking the talk. That uh, Netanyahu talks the talk. He's always a great talker. He gives a great speech. It's action that what matters, and he's done nothing. Um, and you could argue that he's uh, succumbing to American pressure. I don't believe that for a minute. He's letting himself succumb to American pressure. I, I mean, there's no question America's pressuring, but he's letting himself succumb to that pressure. The longer he waits, the more he'll succumb to that pressure. Uh, the, the, the fact is the people he's added, um, the people he's added to his cabinet uh, 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 are also relatively weak. Uh, the one former uh, head of the Israeli military, I think was a, w w was a weakling when he was head of the Israeli military, another one of those who did not want to act in the face of evil. Uh, and, and what we've got now is an Israel that's, that seems to be frozen in place, an Israel that seems to be paralyzed. I see interview after interview with soldiers and, and, and commanders on the ground saying, we want to act, we need the command to go, what are we waiting for? And they're not getting it. Now, they'll get something. I mean, something will happen. But it's not going to be on the scale or on the scope that is necessary in order to do what Netanyahu said he wanted to do, which was dismantle Hamas on the ground up completely so that it could never exist again. Uh, that was his statement. There's no indication that that is, uh, that that is actually uh, going to happen. Um, Again, if you, if you uh, learn us, if you listen to the beginning of the show, I talk about who bombed the hospital. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, and, and this is going to happen every couple of days, as long as it's a, and this is going to happen even more when the ground campaign starts. And it, it, the challenge, even with the ground campaign, is they'll go in, Israel will suffer casualties, civilians will die on the Palestinian side, videos of the civilian dying will be broadcast all over the world. And in the middle of a ground campaign, I wouldn't be surprised if Bibi stopped it. So uh, this is not looking good in terms of what Israel is going to do and what Israel must do. And I think, and I think ultimately the worst sign is the fact that Biden is coming. Right? Blinken was in meetings with the Israeli government for eight hours, seven and a half, eight hours, was it yesterday, the day before yesterday? Seven and a half, eight hours. What, what do they got to talk about? other than the pressure that the U.S. is putting on Israel to open up a uh, humanitarian passage, to bring in aid. Israel should not bring in aid. How, how do you aid your enemy when you're, at, when you're, in, when you're in war? Imagine if, if, if this, this, the Bush did this as well. They, they were dropping food packages in Afghanistan at the same time they were bombing them. They were feeding the Taliban while they were trying to kill them. Um, it just is unthinkable. This is Christian morality, you know, on steroids. Let, let's give them aid while we're fighting them. And again, you cannot, in a war, separate the civilian population from the, the ruling government and the ruling military and the ruling force. And, and here it's doubly so, because the reality is that this is a population that supports Hamas. This is a population that voted for him, for them, and this is a population that, as uh, time after time after time, in every poll taken, supports Hamas over any other alternative out there. 
they are genocidal. They want to destroy the state of Israel. They want to kill the Jews. They want to drive them into the sea. They need to suffer the consequences of their actions. It doesn't mean you target civilians on purpose. It doesn't mean you do any gratuitous, dis- gratuitous killing. You shouldn't. But okay, Israel announced they're evacuating in the north. And, you know, they don't have enough food and water. That's their problem. That is their problem. They, they got themselves into this mess. You know what? Hey, I'm, I'm willing to negotiate this. I'd be willing to say, okay, free all the hostages and we'll provide humanitarian aid. That's it. But you see what Hamas wants and what Bibi and Biden are contemplating is a Hamas proposal to free all the hostages in exchange for Israel backing down on its war. And that cannot be acceptable. It cannot be acceptable to, to retain the military and political force that inflicted the kind of massacre that it could, able to do it again, that every couple of hours launches missiles into Israel, has done this for years. Right now, a lot of the settlements surrounding Gaza are being evacuated completely. All the residents in those places, tens of thousands of people, have been told to leave unprecedented and what needs to be done is I mean I've, I said this from the beginning a, a proper military response basically is the hostages are dead our job is to defeat Hamas that's it if we find a way to save them if we find a way to get them out we'll get them out but we must act from a military perspective, as if they're all dead. But nobody will do that. Nobody will do that. So Blinken was there for eight hours. What were they talking about? They were talking about all the ways in which Israel can compromise, all the ways in which the United States wants Israel to compromise. Note that Blinken came back to Jerusalem, uh, uh, to Tel Aviv, actually, where he was meeting with uh, Netanyahu in the, in the government, after uh, uh, spending last week touring around all the wonderful, civilized, um, uh, you know, uh, westernized uh, countries of uh, of the Middle East. Uh, you know, the UAE and Qatar. He went to Qatar, of course, where, where, Hamas, where Hamas is, where the political leadership of Hamas is. He went to Saudi Arabia, and he got input. He got input from all these wonderful friends of the United States, friends of Western civilization, friends of the future. And... Um, and what they told him was, stop Israel. You want us to be nice to you? Stop Israel. And he came back to Israel and he told the government, stop. And again, I've told you this from the beginning, the Israeli government is weak and is susceptible to any kind of, um, any kind of pressure from the United States. And, and the Biden administration is under a lot of pressure from the left wing of the Democratic Party and uh, uh, from its, quote, Arab allies to rein Israel in and to stop them from destroying Hamas. Uh, All kinds of stories are told. You know, the Arab world will rise up, destabilize the world. There's on and on and on it goes. The reality is, so... The reality is that Israel could take on all of that. It, it could take on Hezbollah. It can take on Iran. It can take on Hamas. Uh, you know, with its reserves fully, uh, uh, you know, and uh, fully uh, armed, and with the uh, with the United States uh, commitment to supplying ammunition, the, United, the Israel can take on any enemy in the in the Mediterranean, in the Middle East. But it is afraid of being isolated. Netanyahu is acting like a weakling instead of acting strong. And the fact that Biden is coming, I mean, wow. I mean, politically think about this. He gets a, he gets in the, he's the first American president to visit Israel in the midst of a war. He's one-upping Kissinger. He's one-upping Nixon. He'll express massive support for Israel. We'll help Israel do anything, everything. And we, we allow them. They, they completely have the right to self-defense. They should be able to do anything to defend themselves. But, and then there'll be a lot of buts where he says the buts publicly or privately, who knows. And 
to kind of the the, the more uh, what do you call it uh, hawkish foreign policy segment of the Democratic Party. He'll come off as a hero to the uh, Jewish voters. He'll come off as a hero. Uh, independents and some Republicans will view him as, wow, this is fantastic. To the left wing, he could tell them, look, I went there and I negotiated with Israel and Israel went soft on the Palestinians and they didn't do this and they didn't do that. And, and we got to, maybe he'll get the hostages if Israel backs down completely. Who knows what's going to happen? But the point is, this is brilliant politics. It's awful policy. It's awful strategy. It makes Israel weak. It makes Israel weaker. And, 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 and let me just note that um, there's a sense in which the struggle, just like Ukraine-Russia, there's a sense in which that is really a, a war or, or conflict between you, Russia and the West more broadly. There is a strong sense in which what we're seeing happen in Israel is going to determine the, 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 the kind of the, the geopolitics of the world for the next few decades. You know, it's, it's, uh, if Israel is weak, that means America is weak. That will embolden, and, and Arab countries will see that, right? I mean, Arab countries don't want a weak America. They don't want to deal with a weak America. And they don't want to, and, and they don't respect a, a weak Israel. So what the Arab world will do is it'll turn to the alternative. The alternative is China and the alternative is Russia. And you're already seeing that. You've already seen that over the last year and a half, two years. They will turn to China and Russia for support. And the United States is going to lose influence, lose credibility, lose uh, uh, you know, its ability to, uh, to uh, elicit fear. Uh, the weaker America looks, the weaker America appears, the weaker Israel is, the weaker the West is, the more likely it is that China invades Taiwan, the more likely it is that Russia increases its aggression in Europe, the more likely it is that both Russia and China increase their influence in, the, in a strategic area like the Middle East. Neither Israel nor America can afford to appear weak right now. And yet, the very fact that Biden is visiting Israel, in spite of the fact that some people would view it as this massive show of support and so on, which I think people are buying. I think everybody's buying across the political map. And I think what, what, what will remain are the photos, the photo ops, what will remain are the powerful speeches. I mean, he gave a good speech the other day about his support for Israel. That will remain. What's happening behind closed doors is, is what's going to actually count. So Biden will win politically and lose geopolitically. Israel needs, needed, it's too late now, Israel needed to preempt the Hezbollah. It's probably America that stopped them. It's probably the U.S. that stopped them. Um, actually bringing in those aircraft carriers close to the Israeli coast and telling Israel, don't worry, we'll protect you from the Hezbollah. You deal with Gaza. If they intervene, we'll help you. Not good for Israel. Not good for Israel. Because it prevented what needed to be, I, 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 you know, it's so frustrating, what needs to be an unrelenting, brutal, uncompromising response to, to what happened last week, 10 days ago. That's gone. That's gone. It's gone. The momentum is gone. The, 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 the more certainty is gone. The confidence is gone. The world support is gone. You know, Hamas couldn't have asked for anything more than this bombing of the hospital to galvanize that world support against Israel and, 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 to, and to remind people how, uh, you know, of all the innocents in Gaza and all the, all the, all the challenges that occurred there. I mean, a proper war with Gaza, 500 people dying would not be a, a, a significant number. Um, in the, I think it was the first week or the first, you know, in the first three weeks of the war in Lebanon in 1982, I think something like 20,000 people died on the Lebanese side. Many Palestinians, some Lebanese, Hezbollah, well, there was no Hezbollah then, but the equivalent of. Um, 
I mean, those are the kind of numbers that are going to have to have to die, sadly. Or, or not sadly, depending on who they are. Um, for real war to be engaged and for victory to be achieved. You cannot fight a war without killing people. You cannot win a war without killing people. You can fight one, but you can't win unless you're willing to kill people. And I know nobody out there is going to say that. Everybody's going to pretend that, no, you can separate the, the civilians. You can be very careful. No, you can't. And if you are, you're basically sacrificing your own soldiers. And how is that moral? How is that right? So um, the right attitude needs to be, you know, your soldiers have rights and, and you should do whatever it can to protect your soldiers while inflicting and ending the war as quickly as possible. But that is not going to happen. And now it's just a question of how bad is it going to be? How much compromise, how bad is the compromise going to be? Uh, how deep is the compromise going to be? How long-lasting is the compromise going to be? Is Israel really going to re stop completely? Is it going to go in partially? Is it going to just bomb? I already was seeing headlines today that the Israeli, Israeli officials are saying, well, you know, dismantling Hamas doesn't mean putting troops on the ground. Yes, it does. As sad as that is, because I, f I, I, I feel bad for the soldiers who have to gonna go in. As sad as it is, for the soldiers who are going to have to go in on the ground. You're not going to be able to dismantle Hamas. You're not going to be able to kill everybody that needs to killing. You're not going to be able to get rid of those tunnels. You're not going to be able to get rid of all the missiles and weapons and everything else. You're not going to be demilitarized Gaza. You're not going to be able to do the things that must be done. And you're not going to be able to bring justice unless troops are on the ground. And already Israel's talking about, well, there are alternatives, there are other things that can be done. They, they continue by air to assassinate Hamas leaders. Uh, a couple of, one of the political leaders and one of the military leaders were killed in the last 24 hours. Hooray. Not enough. Too little. Too little, too slow. Pathetic. Um, this is what I said at 9-11, and this is why the, you know, the Afghan war took forever, and Iraq was a disaster. And uh, Islamic totalitarianism is still a threat to the West. Uh, and this is what I'm saying now. End the war by winning it. Get it over with and do it quickly. I guess quickly is too late now. There is no more anymore.